Oh, kick it up a notch. I'm thinking we can't hear it all, or they can't. I'll skip this song. Fast forward. Don't ever play this again. Matter of fact, never watch this movie again. CCR. Yep. CC Park. <laughs> All right. Mike Brennan here and Steve Townsend. And we're back on whip making uh, videos for advice for new and aspiring whip makers. And one thing that we thought we would touch on is uh, this is another thing where you can get a lot of topics in one. It's the same topic is uh, naming or naming a series, a new series of whips you're making, or naming a whip or some whips that do have styles and maybe patents on the name. There's a lot that you're going to go on this, but naming a whip and kind of why I think all of us are, you know, that do this or how we kind of look at the unwritten rules of the whip naming road. I know the rules of the road. <laughs> so, uh, you know, something like that. All right. Um, first of all, I'll go off on a side thing. Now, this is not really about you naming your own series and stuff. But one thing that comes up is uh, there are iconic whips. In America, they're especially the two most iconic ones, I would say, is the Indiana Jones style bullwhip mm -hmm. and the Zorro style bullwhip. You know, there's some others, uh, but you know, like those are the main ones. And uh, pro uh, you know, shout out to Western Stagecrafts, which we are glad to be a part of that family and make whips for them. And uh, they've been making whips for a while, but Mark Allen used to run the place, and now Kyle's doing a an amazing job with the, the other the rest of the guys that are on top there. Uh, but uh, Mark Allen, uh, back in the day, saw an opportunity after Indiana Jones came out, and I don't know how he came across it or what came up with him, but he decided to basically buy a patent for the name Indiana Jones Whip, or and also the Zorro Whip. It's like he patented those names. I don't know if you guys understand that, but he did. Like, who made the Indiana Jones Whip for Indy? Who made it? David Morgan. David Morgan made it. What did David Morgan call some of those series? Give me an example. The 405. The 455, the 405. Weird series. names like that. You know, we had the 450, 455. He just named them because they don't just make whips there. They make like 450 products. So that 455 was that number. Where was probably that whip and they just itemized it. But it's like the 455. So David didn't make an Ann Jones whip. He made a whip and gave it to the stunt, or, you know, for the movie for him to make, which now became... A classic whip all of us have been seeking after ever since if you're an American whip maker who loves Indiana Jones. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't make an Indiana Jones whip even though he made the whip. So Mark Allen bought the rights to it because, I mean, who would ever think that there would be a reason to make any money off the rights to name a prop? You know, like, this is still, we're talking like, what, 30-some years ago probably when he even did that? You know what I mean? You know, it's a long time ago whenever Mark Allen bought the rights to Zorro and all that. I mean, it's like when... Lucas, one of the rights for the toys, and everybody thought, who the heck cares about rights for toys that don't make money? Yeah. I think it was the same concept. Like, no one cares that Indiana Jones whip. I mean, it's a prop. It's one thing. Like, who cares about the whip? So I think he bought, he bought that in the Zorro one, the patent for it. And then he got special ferals for Zorro and Conchos. If you ever made one, a few of us have made it for them, but if you've ever made one for him, how to do all that. But with that, they have these series. So technically... And this is, you need to understand this. You you technically can make a natural kangaroo in a David Morgan fashion, make an Indiana Jones whip, but you can't call it Indiana Jones bullwhip. This is an Indiana Jones bullwhip. You've got to modify it with the word made in the style of or inspired by, or this is an Indiana Jones style, Indiana Jones Raiders Lost Ark style bullwhip. And it's just a small legal thing. But, you know, that, that, that is actually true. You can, you know, you could technically have action pressed against you. So keep that in mind when you guys start, then we'll talk more about naming whips or what constitutes naming a whip or a series or something. But realize that is true. So I am actually have made an official Indiana Jones whip through them. And you can buy my official Indiana Jones whip and Paul's through them. But the problem is, if you buy it off my website, you're getting the same whip. But I have to call it, I call my Raiders of the Lost Ark the Raider. I call it the Crusader, the Fortune and Glory, you know, the Lion Team. Like, I have my own names, and I can call them Indiana Jones Style. But even though I make official ones, on my site, I have to call it Style. And that's, I don't think a lot of you guys have even thought or heard of this. And a lot of you nylon guys especially don't really probably know some of the American David Morgan family tree of making and what that is all about. So it's good to share this, I thought. That's one reason we made these right. videos. Mm -hmm. Anything else went out on that spectrum of it? Yeah, I don't know. Sound that pretty good. Sound that part up pretty good. Okay. I think so. Uh, 
Another angle, which is good, is a lot of people start seeing names on whips and people name whips. You can name a whip, you can name anything you want in life, that's fine. And uh, I gotta be careful, I explain it to you so you understand where I'm coming from. Um, generally, you know, that, that's kind of how it works. Like I said, you can't call it Indiana Jones, it's patented, that term is patented. David Morgan can't call his whips an Indiana Jones whip because his is the 455, they bought the patent. So even though David made him, even if David made a whip after Raiders, he can't advertise publicly that. But now as far as series, well, you make whips, there's no way to patent a whip. Like, there's no way someone could say, because you made an Indiana Jones whip, you can no longer make an Indi a whip out of natural 12 plat with an 8-inch nail spike that have two bellies and an M6 plat and white high wrist loop. I mean, you, you can't tell people not to make a car, you know? I mean, it just don't work. Cars are cars. But the, the name was that, you know, the name is important. So it's good to understand you can't really patent it to where, like, oh, you cannot make a Raiders because you don't, you're not with them. It just... There, there are things like that. So make what you want. And uh, a lot of us do because some of us make different things and different people want these models. Different people go around and just becomes more uh, regular stuff you get. And one is that Indiana Jones whip. I mean, that, that, that's a common one. You know, so like uh, Paul Nolan is known for making what he calls the little Indy. And I believe it's an eight plat or it's a 12. I think it's a 12 plat single core or fattened core, single belly, 12 plat four foot. And he sells them on stage props. And those are his little Indies or little, L-I-L or little whatever. So I make something similar. I call mine a Jones Jr. And because Paula already does, and mine's different though. Mine's like an eight, ends on a six. I do things differently, but, but either way, it's like, he has a four, uh, a short, a short Indy calls a little Indy. So I can't say, hey, I just made a little Indy. You know, you can call it the short round. <laughs> I love that name, but couldn't use it. You can not call mine the Jones Jr. But you just don't want to call it a little Indy because he's already done that, and that's his name and his model. And so that's one other thing. When you start looking at the thing and you want to look names, see what other names around. You don't want to infringe on that just out of respect. You know, most people are like, hey, man, you got to choose a different name. They've already done it. Yeah. You know, like I was the first one to make a gold whip. That was a snake whip with like a gold woman, Wonder Woman, Fer Wonder Woman Feral. But I called it the Whip of Truth because that's the obvious name for it. It looks like a, it even looked like a rope, but it's whip. And so if I named it the Whip of Truth and I named the series, you know, people could call it anything else. But theoretically, out of respect, they wouldn't call it the Whip of Truth. You know, I could have called it Wonder Woman's Golden Whip or mm -hmm. something else. And you can make the same thing. But that's usually kind of what we do. Like as far as the unwritten rules of the... Whip name and road. Uh, I, there's some other things I've seen with rookies where they just start naming every whip. Like this is Amber Collard. I'm going to call it the Jasmine. And now this one's Snickle Fritz. Yeah, I mean, you just say they'll name them on. I mean, like that's just a little bit different. Just because you have a whip and you name it something. Like I have one called Frankenstein. Doesn't mean I can use Frankenstein because I don't sell a Frankenstein. It was an ugly, hideous, 10 foot, 16 black beast, you know. Um, what usually dictates a series to name would be that it's like if you have a wood, never done a wood handle bull whip. Well, you can make one and name it. But if you wanted a wood hip wood handle bullwhip series, you should name that page. Even if you just call it the Woody. Or Wood Handle Whips. It's just like you want to name you could name that series for you, just don't copy someone else's. I mean no one gonna prop mad if you say these are just called Wood Handle Bullwhips, because that's a generic term. But you know somebody came up with uh, the Whip Woody. <laughs> Whatever you wouldn't want to steal, I don't want to use that name, but you you don't want to use that term if you're making the same thing. Just have a different name. Yeah. You know. And there's not necessarily in these situations any real legality or litigation involved. We're just talking about the etiquette. And, you know, like he was saying, with Paul Nolan has a, a little little Indy, and Blake makes the Jones Jr. And they may be very similar, but Blake's not going to call his line the same thing that Paul's going to call his. Just, and Paul probably wouldn't get on the phone and call his lawyer, but he'd probably be like, well, that's not cool. Yeah, and you might be. Well, he might bridge, even message you know? me about it, you know. But Paul's cool as I love Steve's face. Paul's cool as the other side of the pillow. So Paul probably wouldn't do much of anything. He'd just be probably hurt and upset, right? You know. But you know, it's like, in the reason why Paul probably wouldn't do anything because he's been around. He, if he did call this guy and said, "Hey, just let you know," he'd be kind as you want, writing it out. Just like, "Hey, just let you know this is my model. Please try to find another name." Mm -hmm. People can screw that. And start going off and saying he was being adamant and crazy stuff, and then even screenshot the crap they sent back, and it's just like it can it can taint him. So it's really almost when you're at a certain point, you don't even care about you, you got to stick, you got to not care about haters, because this is my favorite phrase I learned from people: is never give a critic more time than you're willing to give a friend. And I think that's a lot of people are guilty to ready to be like, he just slammed my stuff. Quick, I'm gonna go to war. He's just so mad. Like you can just ignore it. 
you know, if you let some other people handle them. Because generally, the whip world, they'll step up and be like, hey, man, what you talking about crazy? Mm -hmm. Why are you getting all angry, dude? Calm down. It's like, you're being out of hand here. You know, let, sometimes just give it a minute. And at least calm down, if not to let someone else fight. You know, not that we need other people to fight our fights. But I'm like, you know, just give it a break. Some people jump in on there because, you know, no one wants that. And, you know, anyone that's going to act like a fool, don't go down rabbit hole with them and act like a fool back, no matter how much they deserve it. You know. Good advice. Fire doesn't f fight fire unless... You know, it's, it's really water, but, you know, <laughs> so, fire, you can fight fire with fire, just not as a result you want. Well, you got to be, got to be careful, you get, you get burned one way or another. Probably. Any, anything else on the subjects of uh, series or naming or? No, with the series, you know, like, again, you, you summed it up pretty good. Just, uh, you know, wood handles, you can call them the woodies, the woodchucks. If you got a, a series that, like uh, Joe Strain came out with a, a series uh, that he made and they were called uh, the Lone Star uh, Whips. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I am not going to come out with a series and call it the Lone Star Series. And the Lone Star was really close to just what he did with uh, a Raiders. He just had a 10 inch nail spike for the most part. The knots were different, you know, 76. Uh, pineapple five fours, right. you know, and you know the wrist loop might be a little different, you know, but this maybe maybe did a little alter in the construction, but it's like he called those the Lone Star, and so when you get it, you know you're getting those two tone knots, not an end, you're not getting, you know, you know, so you you know you call it the Lone Wolf Star, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that, but just you just don't you, you out of respect, you won't call it, even if you make a Lone Star model because it's your favorite whip, you can make a Zora whip, that's great. You just can't call it the official Zorro. Whip. Right, it's a, it's a Zorro style whip. You know, that's that's acceptable. You know, so, uh, you know, I think a lot of these topics, let me you know if you guys are getting anything out of them because, you know, we're, we're really, you know, some of these I think we're sharing on etiquette reasons because it's like we had to find this out. Sometimes, a lot of us blessed, and Steve was blessed talking to the right people. We kind of learned this, grassroots a lot of this on the way, but it's like I have done some foolish stuff in advertising. You're like, oh, I shouldn't sit there and say it looks like the perfect tape or whatever. I've done some foolish stuff. Like, oh, I see the stupidity of that. So, you know, we're just kind of hoping you guys can get an sense for stuff that you haven't even thought about maybe because, you know, you just haven't got that far. And, you know, you just hopefully helps you along your path farther with more understanding from here on out. You know, because I know I wish I would have heard a little more of this. And right before I gone, you know, like people got a lot of ways and crazy ways and some good on YouTube how to make a whip, but they don't talk anything about the actual reality of making a whip or trying to be professional or everything that has nothing to do with actual whip making, which is what this series has been on. Not actually how to make whips, but how to actually get survive or get by or deal with marketing, distributors, times, price, things that you won't know until you're professional. So if we're helping you guys if you're thinking about that's you, hopefully it'll help you out a little bit. At least you've heard it. Let us know what you think in the comments section, and uh, if there's a particular topics you guys want to have us chat about or let you know about or questions or anything, let us know. Yeah, but man, drop a comment so we know that someone is watching these, because we're probably going to keep going. I got to tell you, I'm doing these just because I want to, and I, you know, I just thought it'd be fun to sit down with Steve and share some stuff, because this is a lot of stuff that we just... We're goofing off, braiding whips, singing songs, making up lyrics, having fun talking about it comes up, you know, stuff that you just don't really get out there, right. so it's... it's uh. I hope someone enjoys it because I ain't stopping until you, viewer, watch this and then tell me, I heard your comment, I need you to stop. So if you don't want me to stop, you tell me to stop. Until then, I'm going to keep going. And then even after that, I'm probably still going. Just being honest. But <laughs> He's being honest. But I want to hear it. I'm not like that. But uh, thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll get a few more of these cranked out soon for you to enjoy, hopefully. And keep on braiding. <laughs>